So earlier this year at ACCU and C++ Now, the estimable Lisa Lippincott gave a deeply insightful and thought-provoking keynote, The Shape of a Program, in which she applied ideas from the study of topology as a way of looking at a program. I was so excited when John invited me to speak to you here today, and I felt inspired to be similarly deeply insightful. But then Michael was like, James, you have five minutes. So then I didn't know what to do, and I decided to watch some TV where I stumbled upon Masterpiece Theater. So Masterpiece Theater is known for producing television adaptations of novels and biographies and other such things. That's actually not important, except that it reminded me of Monsterpiece Theater, which is a Sesame Street skit in which Alistair Cookie presents adaptations based on just the titles of things. The Old Man and the Sea, Dr. No, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So in that vein, I present to you my lightning talk, The Shape of a Program. So programs, programs come in different shapes. For example, this program is rather square-shaped. <laughs> and here we have a program in the shape of the CPPCon logo. A great place to find programs that are in interesting shapes is the International Obfuscated C Code Contest. <laughs> my, my personal favorite is this program, which is a maze game in the shape of a maze that consumes itself as its own input. <laughs> So as I was looking at uh, different shapes of programs to share with you, I thought maybe I could still share something useful. So let's talk about program complexity. Some programs are more complex than others, and there are different ways to measure that complexity. For example, you can use cyclomatic complexity. With this metric, you build a graph representing your program, then you do some graph stuff, and then there's some more of this, and then at the end you learn, hey, this program is a three. <laughs> Three is the number of the program, and the number of the program shall be three. But cyclomatic complexity is not the only option. There's also this Halstead complexity metric where you do some math, and then, I mean, you do some more math, and I don't actually know what's going on here. This is all too much for me to think about during code review. So I went to Wikipedia page uh, for pro uh, programming complexity, and it says many measures of software complexity have been proposed, Many of these, although yielding a good representation of complexity, do not lend themselves to easy measurement. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> so a few years ago uh, on Twitter, I saw this tweet, or something like this. I can't find the original tweet, and honestly, I can't remember who wrote it. So if you wrote something like this, please let me know so that I can give you credit. But this tweet suggested for a simple complexity metric, what if we just use the area under the indentation? And this suggestion has really stuck with me, right? This squarish program from before, for example, has a relatively small area under the indentation, <laughs> and it's also not particularly complex. Similarly, this program has somewhat deeper nesting, but it's still very short. So again, it has relatively a uh, relatively small area under the indentation. It's also not very complex. This program, though, uh, is absolutely, oh, nope. This program, though, has an absolutely humongous area under its indentation, like literally it's the Mount Rainier of indentation. <laughs> it is, by this measure, more complex. So how would we go about making this program less complex? Well, if we're measuring complexity by the area under the indentation, then we can just unindent the program. <laughs> and voila, we've made our program less complex. Okay, no. So let's say that in order to use this metric, the program has to be properly indented. So our goal is going to be to apply transformations to our program that let us reduce the indentation while keeping it properly indented. There are many refactorings that can help us do this, but I do want to call out two in particular. So here is a program with a bunch of nested if statements. We can refactor these into guard clauses. So first we take one of the if statements, and we're going to invert it by adding an exclamation point, as one does in C++. We then change this if statement to just return early, and then we can unindent the rest of the function, reducing the area of the indentation. If we apply this refactoring to all of these if statements, we get this result, which is much simpler than the original. It's actually more than half, or uh, yes, more than half the complexity. The other refactoring that we can do here is to extract functionality into a separate function. Here, for example, this switch statement is trivially extractable. Uh, we just take it, we move it over here, we put it in its own function, we add a call to the function, and now our function is simpler than the original. Just to clarify, this is the better one over here. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to conclude uh, by suggesting that this, like, this metric is actually quite helpful, that you know, the area under the indentation, like, it's, it's a very easy way to eyeball the complexity of a function, and then that reducing the area under the indentation generally leads to far simpler code.
And uh, with that, East Const. <laughs>